I'd just been on a month-long holiday. I sat opposite the doctor. He ran his finger around a dark blur on an ultrasound scan. Then he said the scariest words I've ever heard. This is typical of a large cancer mass. Prostate cancer, stage 3b. The content of this video is the sole responsibility of the speakers in this video. It is not endorsed by the group, nor by the PCFA with which the group is affiliated. See something interesting? Ask your doctor about it. Are you a man with prostate cancer? Do you want to understand your disease so you can talk sensibly to your doctors? You're in the right place. So am I. I'm not a doctor. I'm just a man with locally advanced prostate cancer. One of the things the doctor said was stage 3B something something. Was this stage number another measure of aggressiveness, like Gleason score? I cover Gleason score in another video. I came to understand the T3 thing was about prostate cancer staging, particularly TNM staging. An explanation of TNM staging is fairly simple, but it helps if you know a little basic anatomy, which not all my audience may know. So a few quiz questions after the fashion of the TV show QI. OK, contestants, hands on buzzers, no conferring, no saying the answer out loud. Our first question. You probably know that the heart pumps the blood around the body. An easy question to see first, you know, simple terms. All the fresh blood flows from the heart through the arteries. All the used blood flows to the heart through the veins. True or false? If you said true, stand up and take a bow. Now. If you took a bow, I guess you don't watch QI. QI is full of tricky questions where the answer most people would give is wrong. The screen flashes black and a klaxon sounds, which I simulate now. The reason you were wrong was that I said all the used blood. Not all the used blood flows back through the veins, which will become clearer when you answer the next question. OK, contestants, hands on buzzers, no conferring, no saying the answer out loud. During the time it takes for the five litres of blood in your body to circulate around your body, about 10% is extracted as a clearish fluid and takes a different path. Can you name that fluid? I'll take a medical term or a less polite term as an answer. If your answer was urine or pee or piss, stand up and take a bow. That five or so litres of blood circulates around your body in around one minute. I'm afraid that if 10% of your blood every minute was destined for the toilet, very simple maths shows you would last no longer than 10 minutes. The medical term for the clearish fluid from your blood that does not flow back to your heart through the veins is lymph. I don't know any less polite terms. So, roughly speaking, your heart pumps 100% of your fresh blood through your arteries and 90% of your used blood through your veins. 10% of your used blood travels back to the heart through your lymphatic system. 
OK, contestants. Hands on buzzers, no conferring, no saying the answer out loud. What moves the lymph through the lymphatic system back to the heart? Pumping of the heart? Skeletal muscles, such as the muscles that move your arms and legs. Smooth muscles, similar to the muscles that move food through your bowels, along the lymphatic tubes. Muscles that you use to breathe. A series of one-way valves inside the lymphatic tubes. Did you say heart? Not the heart. Here we can see a section of the tube that the lymph flows along, a lymph vessel. That green blob in the lymph vessel is lymph, which will travel up the vessel. The pairs of blue lines are one-way valves. Here they are closed as they normally are. The red ovals either side of the tube are muscles. When these muscles contract, they will push the lymph against the one-way valves, like this. The valves only work one way, so the bottom valve stays shut while the top valve opens to let the lymph through. When the muscles relax again, as here, the lymph is on its way. So when you squash a lymphatic tube, the lymph can only flow towards the heart. And what can squash a lymphatic tube? Your skeletal muscles, like those in your arms and legs. Your breathing muscles that move your diaphragm, and in some places, some special smooth muscles that just work on the lymphatic tubes. So for full points, you had to choose all four answers, B, C, D and E. One time we notice the lymphatic system is when it goes wrong. If we don't work our skeletal muscles, especially arms and legs, or our breathing muscles enough, the lymph cannot flow back and collects, especially in low places. So, if you spend time as a couch potato, or trapped in an aircraft seat for a long time, you may notice the lymph collecting around your feet and ankles, making them swell. Oedema is the medical term. Another time we notice the lymphatic system is when it is doing right, when it's doing part of its job. Which brings us to our next question. OK, hands on buzzers, no conferring, no saying the answer out loud. I went to the doctor recently and reported feeling a little off colour. The doctor put his hands on me, something like this. What was the doctor looking for? Five points if your answer had lymph nodes in it. Ten points if your answer had swollen lymph nodes in it. In around a hundred places around your body, there is a bulge in the lymph vessel called a lymph node. One of the jobs of a lymph node is to help the immune system to handle infection. As it fights infection, it temporarily swells. Many lymph nodes are hidden well inside your body, but some like those in your neck, under your armpits, or in your groin, are close enough for the doctor to feel. You can feel them yourself. If the doctor feels the lymph nodes here are swollen, he or she will perhaps be looking for a throat infection. Final question on lymph nodes. In a few places in the body, there are bunches of lymph nodes. I'm in my late 60s as I make this video, and I'll be in my early 70s when you are watching it. OK, contestants. Hands on buzzers, no conferring, no saying the answer out loud. I've lost a couple of bunches of lymph nodes. What's the most likely cause? If you said cancer, stand up and take a bow, if you dare. C. 
Certainly, if you had surgery for cancer, you may have lost some lymph nodes at that time. But take yourself a full 10 points if you said tonsils. The two bunches of lymph nodes either side of the throat are called the tonsils. Chronic infection of the tonsils is sometimes, today, dealt with by surgical removal. But when people my age were younger, tonsil removal was much more common. And that's the most likely reason people my age have lost bunches of lymph nodes. But I digress. Enough of the QI type questions for now. Back to the topic of cancer stage, particularly the TNM stage. No, it's not a measure of aggressiveness. That's Gleason score. And there's another video on that. I promised you the TNM staging is simple. Here it is. Doctors use the TNM stage to tell where the cancer is. That's T for tumour. Tumour is another name for cancer. A tumour is an abnormal growth. A cancer is a tumour that can grow wild and spread. Not all tumours are cancers, but the tumours in TNM are cancers. N for nodes. That's lymph nodes. You should know a bit about them now. M for metastases. Metastases are bits of cancer growing away from the original site. Let me show you the TNM stages. This is my picture of a prostate. The real thing is probably not so pretty. But I'm not a doctor or anything medical, so I wouldn't know really. The prostate has a sort of skin around it called a capsule wall. Apparently it's quite thin, but I've made mine thick and orange so you can see it better. The prostate is made of two lumpy bits called lobes. I'll just show them with a line down the middle. There are important bits around the prostate and running through it, but I like things simple. So the only things I am going to show are the seminal vesicles. I don't know exactly where they attach or what they look like, so I put them at the top. The seminal vesicles make part of the fluid for sex. So first, the T rating. T for tumour. Tumour is another name for cancer. Your T rating tells about the cancer that started growing in your prostate. T1, T2, T3, T4. Higher numbers are generally more serious. I can't picture T1 cancers. A T1 cancer can't be felt by a doctor or seen on a scan. So we'll start with T2 cancers. T2 cancers can be felt by doctors. Here's our first one. The cancer is completely inside the capsule. The cancer is completely inside one lobe. The cancer takes up less than half of one lobe. This is called a T2A cancer. Here's our next one. The cancer is completely inside the capsule. The cancer is completely inside one lobe. The cancer takes up more than half of the lobe. This is called a T2B cancer. Here's our next one. The cancer is completely inside the capsule. The cancer is inside both lobes. This is called a T2C cancer. So, the key thing about T2 cancers is that they are completely confined within the prostate. T2A, less than half of one lobe. T2B, more than half of one lobe. T2C, both lobes. Now we move to the T3 cancers. If the cancer has grown right through the capsule wall, but not into any other organs, it is T3A. It has to be right through the capsule wall. Just growing into the capsule wall itself is not enough. Next, Here's where our seminal vesicles come in. If the cancer has grown through the capsule wall and up into one or both the seminal vesicles, we call it T3B. The final T rating, T4, comes if the cancer has grown out of the prostate and into other organs like the bladder or bowel, both of which are uncomfortably close by. So, T3A, growing through the wall. T3B, growing into the seminal vesicles. T4, 
growing into other nearby organs. In short, T2, the cancer is completely contained within the prostate. T3, the cancer has grown through the prostate wall. T4, the cancer has grown through the prostate wall into vital organs. So the T of TNM was about the cancer in your prostate and how far it grew. N and M are about any new cancers it may have started in other parts of the body. N is for node, lymph nodes, but not all the lymph nodes. For the N rating, doctors are only interested in the lymph nodes that are near to your prostate. If you're close enough to the screen, you can see some of the lymph nodes around this man's body. Zero of them have any cancer, so his scores N0. This guy is not so lucky. One of the lymph nodes near to his prostate has cancer. Let me highlight that. Because he has cancer in one or more lymph nodes near his prostate, he scores N1. So for N, no nearby lymph nodes, N0, one or more nearby lymph nodes, N1. Finally, we move to cancers that have moved further afield. The M for metastasis score. First, the guy with zero distant cancers. He scores M0. Next, a guy who has cancer in a lymph node not near his prostate. He looks to have his cancer spread to near his armpit. He scores M1A. Next, a far more common case. If prostate cancer spreads, we say metastasizes, it prefers bone 90% of the time. If prostate cancer gets to the bone, it scores M1B. The final M score is for cancer that is growing in soft tissue away from the prostate. Looks like this man might have prostate cancer in the pancreas, spleen, liver. I don't know enough about the body to tell. Anyway, prostate cancer spread to soft tissue away from the prostate. He scores M1C. I should clear something up here. Whenever prostate cancer spreads, it is still prostate cancer. Prostate cancer in the bone is still prostate cancer, not bone cancer. Under the microscope, your pathologist can see the difference. Prostate cancer in the liver is still prostate cancer, not liver cancer. Prostate cancer in the lung is still prostate cancer, not lung cancer, and so on. So now we have a T rating, an N rating, and an M rating. They are combined. If a man has cancer growing through the prostate wall into a seminal vesicle, that's T3B. With no cancer in lymph nodes near the prostate, that's N0. With no cancers yet found distant from the prostate, that's M0. So that's T3B, N0, M0, or T3 for short, or locally advanced in common language. Just in case there is a newly diagnosed man with a locally advanced cancer, a T3, listening to this, who is wondering whether he has two weeks or two months ahead of him, it may help him to know this. My prostate cancer was large. It filled the right side of my prostate. It spilled into the left side. It was growing through the wall of the prostate in two places, including up and around a nearby organ, the seminal vesicles. The Gleason score of 6 out of 6 of the biopsy samples on the right side was 5 plus 4 equals 9. In all, a large, locally advanced aggressive cancer. As I make this video, that was almost 6 years ago, and my PSA is currently undetectable, so don't panic. If you are a man with advanced prostate cancer, locally advanced like me, metastatic, that is spread to other parts, or recurrent, returned after your first treatment, there is a group of men helping each other understand the disease. The Advanced Prostate Cancer Support Group 
offers information and online forums at jimjimjimjim.com. Again, the website is jimjimjimjim.com. That's the word Jim four times, no spaces, dot com. Nothing else, just dot com. Jimjimjimjim.com. Jim, Jim, Thank you.